an extremely powerful cybernetically enhanced species of humanoids. Planet of origin, unknown. First encountered, stardate 42761.3, when the USS Enterprise was transported deep into the Delta Quadrant during a hostile encounter with a member of the Q Continuum. Pfft, hostile indeed. Bunch of babies. Humans. Terrans. Planet of origin, Earth. Members of the Terran species have populated vast areas of the Alpha Quadrant, developing new and sometimes completely isolated planetary cultures. These various Terrans constitute a major contingent of the Federation. Humankind is admired among species of the Federation for the speed with which its Earth native culture progressed from a pre-industrial to a warp society. Humans are also admired for their insatiable intellectual curiosity. Oh, please. Bajani. Humanoid. Planet of origin, Bajan. After the destruction of Bajan by a planetary cataclysm, the Bajani became a nomadic space culture for nearly two millennia, until the discovery of Bajan II. For the past 300 years, the Bajani have remade the barren Bajan II into a near replica of their original home. The Bajani possess a unique psychophysical response, sometimes referred to as a Bajani pain trance. In the face of great pain or trauma, a Bajani compartmentalizes his mental patterns, storing most of his higher consciousness in a protected area of the Bajani brain, called the Langstrom cortex. During a period of crisis, this phenomena allows a Bajani to complete a complex physical task free from the awareness of pain or fear, and unencumbered from their so-called consciousness. The Bajani pain trance is generally induced by a natural production of adrenaline in response to some physical trauma. This condition may be prevented or reversed by the introduction of an adrenaline block into the Bajani system. Vulcan. Oh, please, everybody knows about Vulcans. Dull, 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 logical, unemotional, cousins to the Romulans. And I hope you're not going to ask me to tell you about them because I won't. Ah! Klingons, planet of origin known by many names, officially referred to by the Klingon High Command merely as the Klingon Home World. Humanoid warrior species of great physical strength with a complex culture of rituals and ranking, once considered a major threat to the Federation, presently, at least in this present, an uneasy and tenuous alliance exists between the Klingon Empire and the Federation, the driving force of the Klingon culture is honor, making them a species which is both feared and respected throughout the galaxy. Q, member of the Q continuum, omnipotent, immortal, and an all-around swell guy, capable of being and doing, well, <clears throat> pretty much whatever I want. It's good to be a Q. <laughs> Lieutenant Ralph Furlong, human, Academy Class of 51, stationed aboard the USS Righteous, stardate 40559. As a cadet, he was the recipient of the Federation Medal of Valor for his part in the rescue of hostages during a Cardassian raid on a Starfleet outpost, stardate 42029. Ensign Anastasia Targus, human, Academy Class of 51, currently stationed aboard the USS Righteous, Targus received medical discharge as per Section Alpha 8. That means she was nuts. Stardate 42112, when judged mentally unfit as a result of her capture and torture experience at the hands of the Cardassian Obsidian Order. Ooh, that sounds painful. Reinstated after a year and a half of enforced medical leave, Stardate 43616, due to vociferous petitioning by Lieutenant Ralph Furlong and Lieutenant Chorus Sprint. Rescued hostages who had been subjected to neurostimulation torture were left profoundly addicted to the Cardassian style of neurostimulation. 
treatment for neural addiction involves an implant which is wired directly into the addict's neural circuit, feeding him or her a constant stream of data, a kind of white noise which blocks the craving. After many months of diminishing treatment levels, the craving is gone and the subject can return to a normal life. Interruption of the treatment in any manner, however, can set back the person's recovery almost instantly. <coughs> Lieutenant Commander Bennington Ben Baraka, human. Starfleet Medical Class of 47. Ship's Counselor for the USS Righteous. In addition, holds qualifying ratings in four command line positions. Security, Ops, Navigation, and Tactical. Counselor Baraka was part of the medical team which developed a successful treatment for the hostages from the Cardassian raids of 65 who had been subjected to neural stim torture. Winner of a silver medal in low gravity equestrian jumping at the Federation Olympics. Stardate 37082. Dr. Thaddeus Quint, human. Starfleet Medical Class of 49. Chief Medical Officer of the USS Righteous. Personnel file contains numerous personal letters of commendation, mixed with a significant number of incidents of crew conflict. <coughs> Lieutenant Chorus Sprint, the Johnny, Academy Class of 51, stationed aboard the USS Righteous, Stardate 40955. Security Specialist. Weapons Rating, 5. Recipient of the Federation Ribbon of Merit with Cluster, Red Cordon, and the Norkin Alliance Crystal Button for unparalleled bravery and innovation for his actions in the rescue of the hostages during the Cardassian raids of 2365. To help you out on your little mission, I've given you all of Sprint's personal memories and some of his professional ones. So although you may remember things like that silly secret handshake you and Targus and Furlon do, you may need help on serious matters of security. Check your tricorder often, cadet. Remember, you're replacing a lieutenant. Consider yourself semi-assimilated into the role. During the raids by Cardassians in 2365, there were unconfirmed reports of the torture of captured Federation citizens. At a skirmish near Tanake, Lieutenant Chorus Sprint led a small band of Federation soldiers onto a Cardassian vessel, personally rescuing 15 hostages, including then Lieutenant Targus. <coughs> Captain Nikolai Andropov, human of Greca colony, Academy class of 40, First Greco colonist to graduate from Starfleet Academy, stationed aboard USS Righteous as first officer, Stardate 35777. Field promotion to captain, Stardate 36533, by Admiral Santana. During the conflict at Kikiri 2, accomplished Sunni sound manipulator player. <coughs> Ensign Mercurius Singletary. Oh, that's a lot of name. Wonder what his parents were thinking. Human. Academy class of 66. My, my. Fresh out of school. Assigned to the USS Righteous. Stardate 43996. Still awaiting transfer of records. <coughs> computer interface. Direct interface input-output port for the USS Righteous main computer. Considered much more effective for analysis than a simple tricorder interface. A Borg. Member of the cyborg species. Borg. Part cybernetic, part biological. See Borg. Another Borg. Another Borg. It's a Borg, all right. Another Borg. A Borg is a Borg is a Borg. Seen one, seen them all. Got it? Reconfigurable bridge console. At present, configured for ship's operations. Ops. 
keeping track of such critical areas as life support, hull integrity, damage, and casualty reports. Captain's chair. Central bridge position, reserved for the commanding bridge officer, usually the captain. Don't sit there. Standard medical tricorder. Capable of analyzing medical data for over 300 species. Conglomerate database allows for 40 to 50% accuracy in diagnosing and treating injury and disease in unknown species. Turbo lift manual interface. Federation turbo lifts are capable of processing verbal commands in over 13,000 languages. For those species unable to interact verbally and during ship emergencies, a turbolift destination code can be manually relayed into the turbolift computer via the interface. For a list of turbolift destination codes, see the ship schematic. Sophisticated information storage and processing device used aboard Starfleet vessels. Composed of linear memory crystal material, the isolinear chip came into general use around 2349. Oh, forget it. People make such a big deal about technology. Computer Core Console. One of four major control points throughout the Righteous for routing and controlling information relay paths. Controls all ship input-output ports and interfaces with the main computer core. Non-standard technological implant. Borg in origin. Energy source unknown. Readings indicate potentially fatal levels of neuro-generated energy. Wah, wah. Danger. Warning. Leave it alone. Melded alloy cutting tool. Used to dislodge or detach two objects composed of alloys of unequal tensor. Designed to separate the two objects with a minimum of damage to either surface. Based on a surgical device which was invented to dislodge skin adhesions from frozen titanium tanks. Portable interfacing device. Used to enhance Federation Tricorder's ability to interface with devices of unknown origin. Used as a buffer with potentially dangerous technology. Standard Federation Tricorder. Pretty good at input storage, retrieval, and analysis of information on a banal level. But with none of the unique cosmic qualities of the one I gave you. Reconfigurable bridge station. At present, configured for internal sensor scans. Jeffrey's tube. Conduit routing circuitry. I hope somebody knows what that means, because I don't. Standard Federation display. Ops. Jeffrey's tube panel allows access into smaller and less maneuverable Jeffrey's tubes. Jeffrey's tube to corridor access. No, wait, it's a board. No, it's a queue. No, it's both. Or is it? Cybernetic elements, but totally lacking in any superfluous biological components. Cybernetic arm element of Borg physiology. Syringe and assimilation attachment for expediting cybernetic to biological connection. Modular, replaceable, as needed. Partially assimilated Borg. Biological elements, human. Formerly those of Lieutenant Ralph Furlong. Cybernetic arm element of Borg physiology. Borg weapon attachment. Modular, replaceable, as needed. 
Don't you recognize it? It's your hand. A board's hand. Reconfigurable bridge console. Presently configured as navigation, determining and setting course, position relative to space and time. Reconfigurable bridge console. Presently configured as tactical, keeping track of all weapon systems, internal and external shielding, and planning all computer-controlled battle maneuvers. Bulkheads. Bulkheads? Do you know what bulkheads are? Walls. Walls on ships. They could just call them that, but no, they have to make up some fancy nautical name. Humans, you just love complicating things. Turbo lift. Intra-ship transport. The turbo lift system runs throughout the entire ship making all major areas accessible within seconds. Dr. Thaddeus Quint, human, Starfleet Medical Class of 49, Chief Medical Officer of the USS Righteous, considered one of the best multi-species diagnosticians in Starfleet. Personnel file contains numerous personal letters of commendation, mixed with a significant number of incidents of crew conflict. Yes, he does look like me. All right, he is me. But in a way, he's still Quint, too. Things can't always be so literal, you know. Borg Designator Interface Circuit. The central cybernetic element of all Borg. The circuit contains each Borg unit's identification labels and any information not yet uploaded to the Collective. If a circuit is removed, the Borg's self-destruct process is initiated and all remaining biological and cybernetic components are vaporized. Yuck. Messy. Computer interface. Direct input port. Allows direct, unbuffered access to the computer analytical core. Emergency med kit contains several high-tech medical instruments, including an experimental programmable hypospray, plus several of the most basic needs associated with emergency medical situations. That means bandages, disinfectants, etc. Barbaric stuff, really. You better just hope you'll never need it. Borg Technology, Console access into the Borg collective information. The console can be interfaced via a direct Borg link. You'll be learning more about that. Or standard manual manipulation. You know, pushing buttons, turning knobs, that sort of thing. Borg linkages. All systems are linked through these conduits. In addition, all systems are linked through numerous backup connections. Hmm, it's Borg. I know that much. Could be anything. Manual interface with Borg collective knowledge. Encryption codes needed to bypass security and recognition levels. Borg status readouts. A constant flow of ship and system ops. Boring stuff, really. Only a Borg would be interested. Yes, I agree. Does look suspect, doesn't it? Innocent, though. Borg are capable of interfacing directly with one another, sharing and downloading any data acquired when out of the Collective's range. Borg Designator Interface Circuit. The central cybernetic element of all Borg. The circuit contains each Borg unit's identification labels and any information not yet uploaded to the Collective. If a circuit is removed, the Borg's self-destruct process is initiated and all remaining biological and cybernetic components are vaporized. 
Except now, it's kind of fried. Partially assimilated Borg. Biological elements, human. Formerly those of Ensign Anastasia Targus. Cardassians. Humanoid race that has been involved in a bitter, extended conflict with the United Federation of Planets. An uneasy truce between the two adversaries was finally reached in 2366. Sound like the Klingons, but far more devious. During a rash of raids by Cardassians on non-military outposts and settlements in 2365, Numerous Federation civilians and cadets were captured by the Cardassians. The hostages were often subjected to neurostimulation torture. The stimulation pleasurable in the extreme was also profoundly addictive. Once a prisoner was neurologically dependent, stimulation was withheld until the Cardassians got the information they wanted. Pleasant lot, those Cardassians. Security console, reconfigurable bridge panel. Though bridge stations traditionally follow a set pattern, this pattern is neither required by Federation protocol, nor is it hard designed into the bridge layout. All bridge consoles can be easily configured to control any of a number of bridge functions, allowing the captain, in consultation with his engineers, to design his bridge to his personal or species preference. To reconfigure a panel, an understanding of the function of the four main nodules is critical. Or, you could end up dead. Nodule 1, the delimiter, carries a signal charge. It is always live, unless deactivated by engineering. Careful, the charge is painful. It won't kill you, but it'll hurt. Nodule 2, the power nodule, is the source of power for all bridge stations. It is always live, unless deactivated by engineering. Careful, this one won't hurt. It'll just make you very dead. Nodule 3, assignable nodule. This is one of the several nodules used to define console functions. In this example, the nodule defines the console as a security console only. To control tactical in addition to security, the nodule must be removed. Careful, though, it's hot, live, energized. Not enough juice to kill you, but enough to make you wish you were dead. To turn off the feed, remove... Nodule 4. The conduit. First! Then remove Nodule 3. Replace Nodule 4. Et voila! Now, you're cooking with replicators! Medical hypospray. Experimental model. Programmable. Uses baseline replicator technology capable of delivering up to 200 different non-zero biological catalysts. Programmable settings. Human adrenaline. Human adrenaline block. Johnny Adrenaline. The Johnny Adrenaline Block. Level 1 Humanoid Neural Block. Paralytic. Safe for humanoids with neural resistance of 4 or less. Humans, Bajani, Bajorans, etc. Level 2 Humanoid Neural Block, Paralytic, safe for humanoids with neural resistance of 8 or less, Cardassians, Vulcans, Klingons, etc. Level 3 Humanoid Neural Block, Paralytic, safe for humanoids with neural resistance of 15 or less, capable of stopping a Palakan rhino in its tracks, Deadly, the most known humanoid species, except a few.
Standard Federation handheld phaser. Power setting range from stun to metallurgical. For use as high-powered cutting tool and from narrow beam to wide beam. Federation phasers are normally adjusted to a standard EM band setting. However, frequencies can be retuned to raise or lower the EM band setting when necessary, such as during plasma disruptions in high tachyon particle fields or any other such environmental conditions which disrupt normal phaser functions. USS Righteous Schematic A general visual overview of the USS Righteous. Key areas such as bridge, crew quarters, engineering, computer core control, are highlighted. More information is available on all areas, including turbo lift designation codes. Neural implant. Therapeutic. Integrated directly into the patient's neural system. The neural implant is used in a variety of neural treatment programs. Ensign Targus's implant is designed to transmit a continuous feed of neural data into the neural system to block out the craving developed during her experience as a prisoner of the Cardassians. Lieutenant Io Galena Shoreham, human, Academy Class of 72, personnel officer aboard the USS Cheyenne. <laughs> Cadet Pietro Exta, Academy Class of 77, temporary assignment aboard the USS Cheyenne. Cadet Cygnus Terra, Academy Class of 77, temporary assignment aboard the USS Cheyenne. <laughs> Cadet Sarita Tashiru, Academy Class of 77, temporary assignment aboard the USS Cheyenne. Cadet Apollina Dimitris, Academy Class of 77, temporary assignment aboard the USS Cheyenne. <laughs> Ensign Bright, human, bridge officer, USS Righteous. Service record indicates an excellent candidate for command line. Lieutenant Junior Grade Peter Mantre, Engineering, due to transfer to Deep Space 12 to lead the engineering team. <laughs> Ensign Argus Milanus, Human, Munitions Expert. Ensign Kelsey Barnett, Life Support Design Technician. <laughs> Lieutenant Roe Alpha Timon, Human, Twin, Engineering, Sibling Transfer, Awaiting Records. Lieutenant Roe Beta Timon, human, twin, engineering, sibling transfer, awaiting records. <laughs> Ensign Daniel Dana, human, bridge officer. <laughs> Lieutenant 
Lieutenant Junior Grade Carl Wintergreen, Engineering, Ops Management Specialist.